Yes. Okay, you have the uh, agenda in front of you. Is there any changes or additions?
comments on it? Otherwise, uh, I just want to make a motion. It was just the three, right? A, B, and D? Yes. Okay. That's correct. Well, I'll, I'll make a, vote, a motion to approve uh, the D calendar school year. I'll second that. <clears throat> Everly? Yes. Mines? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Walt? Yes. Oh, um, one other thing I had is that we did put $70,000 in the loan account at the bank just to put money in there so we're ready to make that payment in, when was it, July. And we had, we had enough money to do that. And just to be clear, that's the money that we
great. I, um, I do have a book, Twilight Night here, and I'll have this out. Twilight So we have room to transfer From money over to pay for food service. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. that, that will that will take care of that. Yep. yep. Do you know what when it's not just money and income piece of it? No, but I have a note to look into that. Okay. I'm kind of curious to the twenty thousand. Yeah. I have a note. I I'll look into that and let you know. Just whether or not we actually expect to get it started. Was there uh, any other questions in the bills? for his time and uh, wish him well in his retirement. So we do need a motion to accept his resignation. A motion to accept his retirement resignation. I'll second. Averly? Yes. Mines? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. Okay. The other is for Clean Schwan, I really question if she's old enough to retire, but um, again, I want to thank her for all her years of service at school. 23 years is a long time to be employed here, and she's done a super great job with uh, Christmas programs and, and music programs, so uh, reluctantly, I guess I would entertain a motion to accept her resignation. I mean, she did teach your older children too, right, Ron? It makes you that old. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve Ms. Schwann's retirement. I'll second that. Okay, 
Averly? Yes. Mine? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yeah. So my question to the two of you, will we start advertising for these positions right away then? Yep, we'll post it. seminar on here. Uh, several of us did sign up and, and take that. I, I thought it was really good. A lot of good information. Uh, anybody else have any comments on it? Folks, you got a little more into the actual mechanics strategy and whatnot. We could have done without the lobbyists, but other than that, it's, it's a good seminar. Uh, Twyla did print out the handbooks. I'm trying to get the PowerPoints from the. Uh, well, they did. I they were sent out to me. Did you get them, Daniel? Or? Uh, yeah, I think the, the school yeah. associates sent out. So. Yeah, they, they sent. Okay. Okay. Usually they're on the website, but they're not on there yet. So they may still have some people that are waiting. Saying no, it's at our own discretion now versus what we initially had planned. 
Right. We, we so, did change that though, Dustin. When we came back to the school board, right. we changed that plan so it may change this and may change that depending on how we feel as a school. Um, right. I would really like to get, and this is maybe bad to say, I, want, I would like our athletes to compete yet. Like you know, our volleyball team, they didn't get voted districts. That was really, really tough on a lot of them. Senior year, not being able to compete in their last tournament. Right now, a girls' district starts tomorrow. Boys is a couple weeks. You know, it just, um, it's really hard to say. And those things are 100% important. However, we have to take the whole school population into account, just not the athletes. And, and so that's what we got to look at, what is important for the whole school, not just the Right, and that's why I surveyed the teachers, and they feel that wearing masks is safer for the teachers and the students. So you're, you're, you're right. I'll, I'll throw in a little bit. You mentioned the distance learning. You know, the thing is when these kids, and I, that would have been interesting too to total up how many total days these kids are out. And, and bless the teachers' hearts, they have worked more than overtime with the distance learning, but it's not doing it. Our, these kids come back from being gone for a long time, and they've missed a lot. That's just all there is to it. It's just not the same as being here. So besides sports stuff, we just want to keep them in school. That's that's the okay. I just the staff and the students. Will it be the plan then forever getting back? Like, will this be forever they have to wear masks? Or what? What? I don't know what the benchmark is. Then what are we going for here? No, that's a good question. Our goal is to try to get normal back to normal as soon as possible. I just feel. Right now, we're at a place that, you know what, if we can hold on for a couple more weeks and then we can start easing up on the restrictions here in school. Um, I just feel if we, I really don't want to go no mask <clears throat> right now just to get through our, our, our season right now. I really don't. Um, and then, like I said, we already said for elementary that no mask outside and recess, no mask, you know, if they can um, social distance during PE. I, what, what are your thoughts, I guess? We, we, our main goal is to keep our students in school and safe with our teachers safe. Well, I don't think there's any course of action that we can take that's going to mitigate the risk totally. I mean, at some point, we have to just decide that we're going to continue with our life or so I think the safest course of action is to do what you're doing and, and wear masks and socially distance when we can. But, but I mean, you can't just shut down the school. And as Hansen was saying, uh, I know my kids struggle greatly with the online part. Uh, as did I, trying to help them through that. I mean, but it was nosedive down. Uh, so I like them being in school, and if y'all feel like you need to have masks, fantastic. has the answer right now as to, to what is appropriate. So the best we can do is, is look at the data we have and, and make our decision locally. Along those same lines though, I also uh, strongly feel that, and, and this is just what I feel in my opinion is, I see especially within the high school, we've got a lot of students who choose to distance learn because if they're home, at least they don't have to wear a mask their cell phones, whatever, you know, these restrictions that we place within the school are only going to make these kids want to distance learn. If they're at home, they don't have to wear a mask. So you guys are concerned about that, but then you got to think about how many you're going to, I know there's there's quite a few in high school that are distance learning for that reason. Uh, I'm just going to jump in here for a second. So last week I and Mr. Kruger were at the girls' district basketball meeting with all schools and I'm, I'm not saying I'm not really talking about the, uh, sports at this point but the feeling of all the schools that were there in general they voted on all the fans and people that are going to be at the auditorium to wear masks um, the thing that I got from their talking about the issue that Wearing masks was a, a big thing at the meeting. It took up a lot of time, and, and they really struggled with it. But in the end, especially the three schools that 
have lost games, their schools are wearing masks. Yeah. Our, our neighbors to the east, um, for their tournaments, they're wearing masks. In fact, they're not even going to hand out in their trophies to the teams. They're, they're, they're still really uh, afraid of what might happen, so they're being really cautious. Not that I'm trying to relate it to sports, I'm just trying to give you the general feeling of the schools around us yet. Um, they, there was a couple schools that really fought it to no avail because everybody else was for mass um, and to the east they were actually more stringent than we are here. Uh, just to kind of give you a feel where they're coming from. And like I said, I'm not trying to relate it to a sport, but um, they're making everybody come to the tournaments wearing masks. They have designated areas for everybody. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think the things might just like that. I won't have one the way I should. Um, and I, I think that we'll get to that point. Everybody's just kind of afraid right now to pull the trigger and say, hey, you don't have to wear a mask. Um, but the general feeling of all the schools around that I got that were at the meeting, you know, they're still going to wear them for now. There are also some worth. schools that haven't worn them since day one and have been functioning just fine. So, I I really don't care either way. I honestly don't. I typically wear mine. I forgot mine in my vehicle. Sorry. Um, I, me and my family we're just gonna follow the rules. Whatever whatever is decided is is what we'll do. Um, I'm not for or against them. I'm I just I just think we need to have a more firm date where we'll kind of look at it again or we're like almost at a benchmark. We'll gonna really look at it to say like hey what is the function and then make sure that we're, we're doing it for the for the school as a whole because awesome. again I go back to it if we're making the kids wear them in gym class if they can't socially distance but then we're boxing out and we're grabbing rebounds and it is no different none at all well, so, so the, we maybe the just need to look at the that the committee put together does it address this or is it something they need to get back and set some timeline well, or so it, it, what it, the policy was when it goes to green, this is what it could do. And the last time they had it in, the school can make the decision that's best for the school at that time as well. So we are following the guideline correctly. It's, they're not doing anything wrong following that guideline. It just... Uh, I don't think that necessarily it needs to be a one-size-fits-all approach if, if this than that. I mean, if, if we're going to take measures that are more restrictive, favor of being safe, and that's what everybody feels is, is appropriate, then, then that's fine. So, no, there is no difference between a gym class and a basketball game. Um, however, it's more safe than not to do it one way or another. And to put a date on it or to put a, a specific drop dead, I, I, I think we need to be more agile than that. Yeah, not a drop dead date, yeah. but we're going to look at it every two weeks or we're going to whatever, so look at the data. Sure, yeah, and I, I think that's what Mr. Green is doing, is, is, is doing that and, and trying to figure out. I mean, we get conflicting guidance from everybody because it's now gone from a public health issue into the political realm, so that we've lost all sense of what is appropriate. Uh, so all I can do is rely on them to make the best decision for the school. You know, unless there's just something just totally outrageous coming down the pipe, but you just we have to allow them to be the, the, the agile, and it followed. And if we have to make a, a, a rule that is contrary in, in one aspect, but it, it's safer that way, then I think just err on the side. And then are high school kids wearing masks in gym then as well? Or is it just elementary? What are... They've been kind of just judging it on what they're playing. I've been in some where they've let them put them down. And then the next game they're playing like, well, what is it? They play an elephant through the under, sliding under each other tape. Then they're wearing it because they're right up against each other. So it's kind of. You know, depending on what they're doing. Was it you who put masks on the edge of it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so has your question been answered yet? No, I don't think. I, I only wanted, I wanted an answer about when I think, and I don't know if I have an answer about when. I mean, forever, if we could wear masks, we'd be safer. Or we're going to say, at some point, like. We're not going to let it hold us hostage anymore. Right. So I just, I want to know what that was like for Amy, or is it for basketball tournaments? Yeah, but then we want to baseball, and then you have state baseball, and yeah, and yeah, track. Right. And then, yeah, and then younger kids sports started. So yeah, the only thing with those sports are more outdoors than the 
basketball thing, but um, we can sit here and talk for another hour about the mass and the south and staff's point, but um, I mean, my opinion right now is I'm okay with Mr. Gurdon and our COVID coordinator to kind of guide us through this. I'm with Nicole, yeah, at some point we need to be done with this. What date that is, I don't know, but there's nothing wrong talking about it and looking at it. And, and um, certainly by the next board meeting, hopefully we're done with it. But if, unless anybody objects, I'm fine with the two of them still working through this and kind of figuring it out. Because, I mean, it, it just happened, you know, what, 10 days ago or whatever that changed. But um, my best day at work was the day we got to throw the mask out, I can tell you that. So that, you know, I, I understand for them in the first place, but um, unless anybody objects to that, or, or do you want to change course from that? Or? I have no objection. I just want to make sure we're doing it for the right reason, right? Yeah. I would like to revisit, you know, every week what's going on and talk to Mrs. Hansen as the COVID <coughs> coordinator, what's the best plan of action every week, you know? Hopefully in a few weeks that we can say, hey, it's just in the hallways. Because they've also changed the, the CDC guidelines as far as restrictions and close contacts and, and those definitions as well. So we have to keep up to date with that and make sure that we're looking at it. Because, you know, it's no longer 14 days, it's 10 days based on certain criteria. And some days, sometimes in some cases, seven days. So making sure that we're up to date on that information being held hostage to the to the old data, thinking that we're, we're still going to spike. We hit that spike in late October, early November, through the beginning of December, and looking at those state numbers, Ward County today at 16 was the highest that it's been in about a week, and so it's been single digits mostly. So we just have to make sure we're making the right choice for everybody and that we're all staying safe, but being logical. I do talk to the, um, I keep saying my new best friend at the health unit in my life. We, we talk almost weekly, either she emails me or we talk about, yeah, those changes. And um, today she sent me some guidelines like the National Academy of Pediatrics, what they're still saying. You know, so we do get a lot of information from, from right. them. Yeah, they've been great. Can I just piggyback off this masks thing and ask, are we meeting I mean, our parents are allowed in the school yet. Are they able to come in and meet with teachers or you guys? Because I'm just, I'm just asking, because we're talking about masks, and we've got school board meetings open to the public, we've got you know, the gym open to the public now for activities and games, but we're still not allowing parents to come in and meet with teachers and staff? As of now, unless it's like a real emergency, we've been trying to do it by Zoom. to get the super evaluation, which superintendent evals. Um, I think the next board meeting is March 10th. 10th. Yeah. The deadline's the 15th, so if I could get these probably like by March 1st from you guys, and then I can file them and we can approve it at that board meeting then.
from my point of view, we would definitely want Mr. Gurney to apply a little there. And then it's up to the teachers to come up with their representation, but I don't know if they've done that yet or not. So, so I guess I understood that the, the superintendent and the business manager were, were resources for both sides. So they're not really Correct. part of our team, but they're just a resource for information. But we need somebody there when, when we meet. You know, and that was what kind of threw me for a little bit, but you've got to record and publish the minutes of the negotiations. Uh, yeah, so. Do the meetings have to be posted? Yes. And the number changes too? Yeah, I don't know if that's a change from what it used to be or. There's not a forum of the board. <coughs> no, it's not a board meeting, it's just a negotiation oh, meeting, sure. but I do believe they have, the meetings have to be noticed. And they're, and they're open meetings. I mean, strategy and executive sessions are permitted, but the, the actual meetings between the teachers are, are in the, the board is in its own. Now, one of the interesting things is if one of y'all wanted to attend as, a, as a, a member of the public, then it would be a forum and then it would be a school board meeting. And we'd run a foul. I'm sorry, I can't. Yes, if one of y'all were to attend as a member of the public, then we'd constitute a forum and we'd be a foul of the law for not posting it. So y'all can't attend it, but it is an open meeting. You can't attend. You, you cannot unless we post it as such, or if the teachers wanted to, they could call for a vote right there um, just because there were three of us in, in the room. So. so board members can't attend. Board members can't, the teachers. But teachers and public can attend. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So my thought after this, uh, and we really can't do anything until we get the numbers from the state. But what we really need to do, and probably at the March board meeting, is to go into executive sessions board, and which we are legally allowed to do, and come up with a strategy of what we want to achieve, um, spell out the priorities of what we want to do. And even, to me, even if we don't know the money at the time, the priorities should, should still be there. I have a couple of questions uh, just from that standpoint. One, has anybody asked for negotiations? Do the teachers want to negotiate or do we want to negotiate? Has that, that's not occurred yet? Nobody's, okay. And then, well, certainly as a board, we would want to, we want to. Okay, so we would just leave it tag. What's, what's there? I'm really having a hard time hearing. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I don't know yeah. if you need to take your mask away from your mouth. I'm or, so scared. <laughs> so. Thank you. Who's got the beard? Yeah. <laughs> it's starting to feel funny. Right? So, um, okay, yeah, and, and that, that's why I was just curious. And uh, I'm just trying not to run afoul of anything in that seminar. I had a bunch of legal information, but would it be possible, even on our own agendas, but, um, to have executive sessions built in so if there ever was a time we needed to? Otherwise, we have, we have to post an executive session. So in order to legally do that, we have to tell people there's well, a chance that we can. And I that. think as long as the negotiations are on the agenda, we would just put executive session. Yeah. Right. Okay. I won't be able to be at the next the March meeting, so I won't be able to do an executive session either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I start for the 15th so we can approve the email. But no, I'm not talking about the board meeting, I'm just talking about the executive session. Well, it would be... At the end of the board meeting? It, it would be during the board meeting. Oh. So when it would occur. Could we post it separately and maybe do it like on a Tuesday? Well, you could have the board meeting on a Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, but... <laughs> I mean, 
can see that we would go into executive session at every board meeting until the contract's approved. So, yeah, just to update. March 8th or April 8th is the last one? Or April 7th? Yeah, the 7th. Well, is that Oh, no. no April 14th is the next one, and I, I'll be fine. So it's just the March one that I'm yeah. going to have an issue. I mean, I, I can juggle my schedule. Well, yeah, it, so it conflicts with the Boise District Tournament. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 We'll, we'll just leave it for March 10th. Oh, yeah.
was one for this one right here. Activity, band and choir, where we paid forty-eight fifty-five. That's what it says. I, I didn't look at the contracts. But we didn't have any extra activities for band or choir this year, so I'm just confused why we would pay that if we're not paying the that, that band and choir um, is also pet band, and we, um, that's, we had pet band the last home game, and we're going to have pet band on um, the last home game of the boys, and they do go to all state um, festival coming up in a couple weeks, so their stuff is still coming. Could some of this COVID money be used to pay for these contracts? No. No, because it was already budgeted from last year. So we're going to pay him $48.55 for doing two pet bands? Well, and he also did all the, he also got all the school songs ready for all the football games, all the basketball games, he played them, he got everything ready, so yes. Okay, did we offer that same opportunity to the cheer coach? <clears throat> I'm not sure what, really that should have been a Mr. Kruger question, because he's athletic director. What I know is that they didn't have cheerleaders for football, and so we did give her a different contract for a, Spirit advisor, because that's what they agreed on. And you could, you should see a spirit yep. get in there. Yep. So that's what they agreed on instead, because they didn't have football cheerleaders for football. Way I understand. I guess I'm just trying to wrap my head around why we would pay somebody a full salary for doing minimal work for their contract. Um, as far as getting the school songs and stuff, like, couldn't we maybe have saved a little bit of money and given that task to somebody else? Like, don't we have an administrator on duty at every game? Yes, we do. Would it have made sense to save some money into that? I'm just trying to, to think, look, we're, we're not in a very good financial situation. And I guess I just, I'm a little bit concerned. That's $5,000. Is that the only contract not paid for extracurricular? Is it here? Or is there other ones? Just here. That I saw, anyways. Which is good. I mean, I'm glad to see that everybody's getting an opportunity to, to coach. Because I know we didn't have, you know, baseball or track last year, which was sad. Thankfully, we still got there. I'll just I'll address Mr. Peltier's a little bit. Just because I'm here for every girls' basketball game. And he, he was here doing the music mm -hmm. for everything. Whether He was there, he was putting his time in. Um, now, when we did these contracts, we put in there that if the sport did not occur, they wouldn't get paid. Well, we didn't say anything that if it half occurred or whatever. Um, I mean, I see him there every night when we have home games, so he's putting his time Okay, so if Tiffany would have just shown up for, for football, even though we didn't have cheer, she would have gotten paid? She's putting in her time. But she didn't, she didn't do anything. But, but did, he, we he's the, working. did we afford her the same opportunity? Exactly. That's, that's so my question. Any cheer? We had um, no cheer in the whole Yeah, year. home games for no, we do high school. For girls and boys basketball. But her original contract just said cheer coach. Is that right? Well, I, you can look at the right? contract. There's football cheer coach and basketball cheer coach. There's junior high cheer coach. Um, I'm not sure what they talked about, Mr. Kruger and um, Ms. Madison. They came up with the decision of having her as a chair advisor. So was this agreement also made between Mr. Kruger and Mr. Pelletier? You would have to ask Mr. Kruger that. I, I don't know what was talked about in those conversations. I, I don't have an issue with I don't. I don't know what you say that he's not doing stuff. No, I didn't like, think he's not. Like Mr. Um, not really said that he was at every single game getting everything ready. So he was trying to do his job every single game. And that man, 
once he was said, hey, you can do it because of COVID, he, he got his band ready and they played. And that's just, he has a couple festivals coming up. He's preparing those students, and that's part of that contract is bringing those students to festivals. So he, he is doing some of his contracts. Some if of, not it, all of right. it, If not all of it. Because he, he was at every game. But he didn't do Pet Band. And that's part of his contract. Was it in his contract to do the music? That's the only thing that contract says is what you read. And that's, if there's no duties on the contract. Right. It's very basic. I just speak with Okay, so his 
the senior advisors become a result of not doing junior high basketball? Is it like a replacement? It's a replacement of the football and um, the football chair. The I do believe. And your coach is here if you have any questions. Can I just add something first? Each contract that Ms. Madison has for cheer coaching is on a salary schedule, so they're not all straight across the board the same amount. It goes by the number of years you have, and then it's based right. on an index of the base salary. So she gets paid less money for junior high coaching than she would varsity basketball coaching. So it would be almost impossible to combine it into one. I also want to bring up that we paid the junior high girls basketball coach in full, and they only had a few games this year. So we did pay her in full for the duties that she did, and it wasn't a full season. Right. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Did that they still doing. have those full practices though after school, or was that was no. that limited too? There, everything was limited. Um, we were we were out of school for a couple weeks, um, and then the governor shut us down for a couple weeks. So. Um, she didn't have all the practices that she would have in a full season. I think that's the issue, though, is that you pay for the full, the full contract, and in the other case, the cheer coach, you didn't. That's, I think that's the issue. Well, so the only way you can take care of this is when we get into negotiations and do the contract. So if you want to get more specific and address that, we have to do that in contracts. The contracts we have now always stated if the sport did not occur, you don't get paid. So if it was half a sport or a fourth of it, they get paid. It's, it wasn't addressed. So You can ask Mrs. Ma Ms. Yeah. Madison what they talked about because I was not in that meeting. Did you do any of the football hearing or junior high basketball hearing? Okay, so this year was a little different. Um, I, for football, I did not have cheerleaders because a lot of them wanted to try volleyball, which I totally support whatever they choose to do. Um, but I still did all the posters, locker tags, senior nights, spirit leagues, homecoming, everything. So Mr. Kruger and I agreed on spirit advisor pay because I felt like my time shouldn't be just worth nothing. Um, but since I didn't have cheerleaders, I also should not be getting that pay for football. Um, and then I do have varsity cheerleaders that this year we opted not to travel with COVID, but instead we decided to cheer all home games for boys and girls, which equals the same number of games. And we felt like it was a way to support and include everybody. Um, and then I don't have, I didn't have any seventh and eighth graders that were interested in cheering, and I just didn't even push it this year. When fifth and sixth grade basketball rolls around, I usually do that too. So they didn't have cheerleaders go up for football. So that contract, right. how could we pay that contract? Yeah. They didn't have cheerleaders for the junior high, so how could we pay that contract? Okay. I, and I, then I'm glad that you're doing this spirit, you made posters, and I'm glad that you guys worked out of it. Because you do a lot of work. Yeah, it sounds like that you were paid for the work that you did do. Is that right? Okay. And that makes sense. And I think the reason the junior high one is in there is because I always have had junior high cheerleaders, but then last year I had eight, no, seven eighth graders who are now freshmen. You know, so now they cheer for varsity. Well, then I didn't have any seventh graders that cheered last year. So I just didn't have anybody that wanted to move up in the junior high age, which is okay. Um, so I think that's why it looks like it's just an old contract because it has always been fulfilled, it just wasn't this year. So when we're talking about the contracts, Mr. Peltier, do you, do you feel it would be beneficial for your contract to have more specifics lined out of what the requirements are, or do you th not think that's necessary, in your opinion? Um. Like, it, is it more required just for the band, and 
if if there is no band is playing music then fall under that for you. Uh, I, I think when they renegotiated the contract we split between uh, activities choir, activities music, or activities band, they combined. Um, when they negotiated that, we had all the views that I do, and that was what factored into combining them and changing the base scale for us. Um, so I think they're in there. This year it was weird. I, right. um, I would have been doing every of you know, the 28 that band, all five, six stuff that we go to, the five, six weekends it takes up, all those things. So I don't think I need it in there. Okay. 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 I just wanted your opinion. Yeah. And I think right now we're kind of getting into the negotiation topics that we need to, like, if, if you want to change, do anything when we go into executive session, that's when we need to talk about. No, absolutely. I just wanted to get his opinion since we were, you know, talking, kind of putting him on the spot there for a minute. I just wanted to hear his opinion. And, and thank you because I just I, I really was interested to see the numbers for our contracts and I'm again really glad to see that we were able to pay as many people this year as, as we were. So Okay, our next board means um, um, can I I did notice on calendar B one we're we're going so fast this afternoon try to get another calendar. February twenty first should be blue and not the fourteenth. Um So February 21st is President's Day, and that's the CRA day off um, professional development meeting, not the 14th. So that should be down just one. I wanted to let you know that February 21st is the day off for our professional development. Yeah, I don't think that changes. <laughs> so it's just one week down. I don't know. It's on A and B, but for some reason it's not on D. Yeah, I'm set up for it. I'll make a motion to adjourn.